Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're doing the CFS six month look ahead today. Gonna to have a look at the anomalies from the long range CFS model, see what they're showing for the next six months. This will be encompassing the period from October to April. Um, we do this every uh, month now at gaslovebiz.com. The first Sunday of the month will have the CFS uh, six month look ahead. As it's the first of September today, Sunday the first. Uh, yeah, today's the day uh, when we're doing it. Now, before I get on the video, I just want to mention a couple of things. First, we want to say that I'm suffering from a very bad case of late summer uh, hay fever, so I hope you can hear me okay. I'm a bit sniffy, a bit croaky. Hope you uh, can uh, follow me all right through the video. Um, I may have to stop having a bit of a cough, have a drink of water, or have a bit of a sniffle through the video, so I hope you'll uh, bear with me. Also, I want to mention the advertising. There's green keyword ads on our pages at gasworthies.com. Running cursor over green keywords, bell display ads. We can click through the words. You go to the advertising website, be sporting gasworthies.com by doing that. And finally, I want to mention the website we're using for this video today. It's from uh, Micho Seal the uh, CFS model uh, charts at uh, website Metro Seal. You can find the link to Metro Seal on my um, links page. Now, I should just explain how this works, how uh, long-range uh, models generally work. You have to uh, follow the updates and see if a trend emerges. Now, what I'm doing with this is a bit wrong, really. I'm taking one run of the CFS model on uh, the night of Saturday, 31st of August. I'm taking that in isolation, presenting the video. You shouldn't really do that. What you should do is go to Micho Seal, uh, the CFS model updates probably two or three times a day, uh, maybe even four times a day. Um, so it's updated all the time through the day. Follow each update, and uh, over time you should see patterns and trends emerging. And that's really how how uh, you use the uh, CFS bar, because it updates a lot. Um, so you can't retake one running isolation. You shouldn't retake one running isolation. I'm doing uh, today. It's a little bit wrong. Um, but uh, that's what you do. You go to a uh, website and check it out. Uh, frequently and see the trains and patterns uh, that emerge. But what I'm doing is really just for fun, it's just for a bit of uh, entertainment on a Sunday um, morning, but don't take it too seriously. So as I said, we're using anomalies uh, for monthly periods uh, for the next six months, and we're gonna start off with the sea level pressure anomalies, uh, and we're gonna start in October 2013, so uh, becoming October. And what we're looking at first of all, as I say, is the sea level pressure anomaly for October, and as an anomaly, it's showing that we've got quite a lot of high pressure up around Scandinavia and stretching out to the north of Scotland as well. We've got low pressure as a trough uh, down to the south and the southwest of the country. So for much of uh, France particularly, we've got that trough of low pressure and stretching down in towards Spain as well. That could be quite an unsettled scenario for the south actually. We could be bringing up um, rain quite a lot into southern parts of the country. But for the north, it would be much drier because we're close to that high pressure. Winds would be frequently from a north or northeasterly direction, I think, with this. So it could potentially be quite cold, especially later on in the month. Perhaps not too cold earlier on, but later on, that could be quite a cold-looking anomaly um, for October and potentially really quite wet uh, down in the south. Now, as we move through to uh, November, it's shown that we've got high pressure really sitting over the British Isles and centred very slightly to the north and the northwest. But really, high pressure is around British Isles. So what we're looking at there, uh, with that high pressure, is a very dry month. I think it would be uh, we'll be seeing precipitation coming in well, uh, well below average with that high pressure and potentially quite cold as well, especially later on in the month. Um, when you would expect a lot of frost and fog. But the main thing about that, I think, for November is that it could be in for really quite a dry uh, month in November. Now, as we move on into December, look at this. It's going for more blocking out to the north of the northwest of the country. The blocking area of high pressure this time is a centred... Um, more or less to the, just to the south of Iceland, really, but um, it's generally to the north of the British Isles. Uh, you can't really see that with the colours, but we've got a lot of high pressure there up to the northwest of the country. Uh, the low pressure is down to the south. The jet stream would be coming through something like that, so I think we are on the cold side of the jet, and at times, at least, you would be getting winds coming in uh, from a north or a northeasterly uh, direction. Also, because of the position of the uh, anomalous area, 
down in high pressure just to the south license you would occasionally get uh, milder winds flowing around the top from the west um, so it wouldn't be cold continuously but overall that's a pretty cold looking signal to be honest uh, for December you expect a pretty cold month I think from that so we're going to have a look at the temperature and precipitation forecasts that correspond uh, with these pressure anomalies in a moment moving through to January well look at this it's still going for this idea of high pressure uh, giving a really cold uh, January I've been checking the updates through the um, through the last week and I thought the CFS model was actually backing off from it a little bit uh, but tonight when I'm doing the run on the 31st of August it's certainly gone back to this idea of blocking and this time it's centering it around Scandinavia uh, for January now at times it will be centered uh, around Iceland on some of the updates it centers around Iceland on some of the updates it centers it around Greenland and sometimes just sometimes you get a huge blocking feature setting up across the whole of the northern uh, latitude at our on our side of the northern latitudes but for this particular update the uh, anomalous area of high pressure is centered around Scandinavia wherever it's sitting nevertheless that's a very cold uh, looking signal to be honest um, for January and yet you would be expecting a really cold month from that with a lot of easterly and northeasterly winds Go through to February, and don't worry about that, this is saying uh, March, it is wrong, this is the uh, chart for February, and again it's still the same idea, but we've got northern blocking, this time it's more centred, uh, this month I should say, uh, it's more centred around Iceland and around Greenland, but the result is still the same, uh, which I've got a lot of northern blocking, but low pressure is to the south so the North Atlantic Oscillation is very negative here, it's not through the floor but it is negative, uh, low pressure around the Azores, high pressure around Iceland uh, the jet stream would be running to the south of the country um, something like that, so yeah that's another cold month, we've got three winter months all looking cold here I think we're going to check the temperatures in a moment, but I think all three winter months are looking cold on this update. Going through to March, and on it goes. We've got the blocking there now centred around Iceland. Very uh, intense sort of blocking uh, around Iceland and around Greenland as well. Lots of anticyclonic influences stretching up to the uh, north of the country. But low pressure is still going on to the south. Uh, the jet stream would be running through something like that. So on the cold side of jet, all three winter months I think on this update are showing that we're on the cold side of the jet and we're still on the cold side of the jet as we go into March as well and then finally have a look at April no real change to be honest the CFS model is seeing that we keep northern blocking persisting so we get a huge amount of northern blocking once it sets in uh, in January uh, uh, well December really but uh, particularly in January from January we get a huge amount of northern blocking stretching out into April as well uh, that's another cold looking month and this time the trough is closer so potentially we are bringing wet weather in from the south and the southwest with that but the main thing to take from this is that the uh, the pressure distribution for all the winter months and on into the spring looking very very blocked now as I say we, I shouldn't be doing uh, it like this but I've been keeping an eye on this over the last few weeks you know I've been checking it very regularly and up until the last week the CFS model was showing this sort of, these sort of scenarios very regularly it appeared to be backing off a little bit in the last week but it's gone back to it uh, big style tonight. Let's have a look at the temperatures that correspond uh, with those pressure distributions and for temperature precipitation anomalies you do have to take with a pinch of salt. Personally I just go by uh, the pressure distribution. Sometimes you have to override these longer range models but so this really is just for fun. But for October it's seen near normal uh, temperatures there and remember this is where uh, the British Isles is on this map. It's seeing uh, near normal temperatures for October maybe fading slightly under the average but near normal for uh, November it's a little bit colder than average and it's not surprising because remember November has a lot of high pressure uh, with the uh, with that anomalous area of high pressures around the country so uh, quite a coolish looking month there uh, for November and there'll be a lot of frost and fog I think for uh, December well unsurprisingly we've got a cold month being signalled there uh, anomalies anything from around 2 to uh, around 1 to uh, 3 degrees below average but for central parts Europe and into France we've got anomalies of 4 to 6 degrees um, below average 
also very, very cold month for so much of Europe uh, in December. For uh, January, look at that. Look how cold it is uh, for January. And it's not surprising with that high pressure, anomalous air high pressure over Scandinavia. But that is another exceptionally, can't emphasize enough, exceptionally uh, cold looking uh, January for much of Europe. Now, this uh, anomaly scale only goes to there, to the dark blue. This is off the scale in terms of cold for much of Central Europe. When you get those black colours, you're talking about temperature anomalies probably going somewhere to around uh, 12 to 15 degrees below average. Of course, it's very cold in Central Europe anyway, but the average is very cold. So to go that cold across Central Europe, that is alarmingly cold. Uh, much of Central Europe would be in the grip of a horrendous freeze-up if that was to occur. For the British Isles, uh, well, we're around 4 to 6 degrees below average. That's very cold. That would probably be bordering on a sub-zero month. And as I say, the CFS model is going for this time and time and time again. It has been. appeared to be backing off a little bit in the last week, but it's going for it big time tonight. That is alarmingly cold uh, for much of Europe in January. As we move through into February, thankfully for central parts of Europe, things do, <coughs> excuse me, things do moderate somewhat. But generally, it's a cold scene across much of Europe, and for the British Isles, the anomaly is somewhere around one to two degrees below average for March. Uh, colder than average again, one to two degrees below average uh, for April. Well, now the uh, anomalies are coming up a little bit, and we're actually going a little bit above average uh, for some parts of France and northern Spain. For us, we're still just about uh, cooler than average. But the reason that's happening is that we're bringing in more of an Atlantic influence, which, whilst could be very wet, uh, also um, potentially does uh, make it somewhat less cold. But back January, I've got to come back to it. Really, really cold and severe cold uh, January being predicted there. The precipitation anomalies show that, uh, well, we're going to be uh, a little bit above average across parts of England and Wales, driving average up to the north. That's because we've got high pressure into the north country and the low pressure is attacking uh, from the south. Um, for November, not surprising, it's going for a very dry month there. Uh, the blue colours indicate precipitation coming in drier than average. Uh, drier than average also uh, for December. Uh, again, the reason that's happening is that we're blocking off the Atlantic, um, so we're not getting westerlies coming through as you would normally expect so again uh, a dry month in January or drive an average month in December and a drive an average month in January as well these blue coats remember not temperature but precipitation and where you're in the blue you're below average with precipitation so drive an average uh, really all the way through from November to January on into December generally into February I should say generally the idea is it still is dry an average but it's less dry uh, than it was earlier in the winter and for March and for April as well uh, the idea is that it's still drier than average although notice by April uh, those anomalies are coming up more uh, to the south but really with the northern blocking influence um, that kind of uh, means that for many of the months we're looking at drier than average signal but of course there would be quite a lot of snow uh, potentially with some of these charts and again I want to come back to that temperature anomaly for January look at that that is ex exceptionally uh, severe cold across many parts of Europe with those black colours and even for us very very cold looking January is being signalled Finally, just want to mention uh, my good friend Brian Gaze at weatheroutlook.com. He's started running uh, CFS. Well, he's got uh, the, uh, the information in a slightly different format, perhaps easier uh, for uh, non-weather uh, experts to uh, make out. And you can go to the Weather Outlook and select um, whatever region you want for the British Isles and see uh, what's occurring. Again, you have to do this like you do with the meteor seal chart. You have to check it several times today, uh, see the trends that are emerging. This is the uh, latest one at the Weather Outlook for January, um, kind of backing up what we're just looking at, and this is for the Midlands, I've said to Midlands because I'm in the Midlands. Um, and yeah, that sort of backs up what we've been looking at. Very cold month being seen on the 6th of January, uh, for instance, Monday the 6th of January 2014, uh, indicating snow showers with a temperature of 1 degree, a minimum temperature of freezing. 
and we can go on uh, to Thursday the night for instance it's indicated it's going to be snowing uh, with temperatures sub-zero and we go through January and we see that it's a very cold month we get through to the last stages 23rd, 22nd, 23rd, 22nd, 23rd and yet we've got heavy snow uh, being predicted on many days with temperatures around freezing uh, throughout much of the month and that is hardly surprising that's what happens uh, what the model is seeing would occur based on the charts we were just uh, looking at. So that's an just another way of uh, seeing what the CFS is doing um, and it's perhaps a slightly easier way uh, than the charts I've just been looking at. So do check out weatheroutlook.com uh, you can uh, see, uh, sorry what have, I, what have I done there, yep yeah, that's it, uh, you can see uh, how the CFS, uh, sort of how CFS monthly anomalies sort of break down into a day, uh, a daily forecast going out uh, for the next few months. But again, it's the same idea, but you have to check it several times a day, um, and sort of follow the trend of the model. And particularly, I would focus particularly on January uh, because that's the month I've been focusing on, being very very cold consistently on the CFS bowl. So focus on January, uh, see if these cold scenarios for January are still cropping up. Uh, today's is at the very extreme end of things, uh, but just century up. And if it was to occur as it's predicting uh, today, it would be extremely, extremely alarming. Uh, century up would be very, very badly hit. That's it for now. We're going to be getting on with all winter forecasts over the next few uh, Sundays. Come back next week. I'll be explaining all the things that I'm going to put into my um, my uh, winter forecast. Uh, and then after that, we'll get on with it and start uh, doing it. So it's all going to start happening over the next few weeks over the next few weeks as we run up to winter. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching the video. Bye for now.